Okay. We are recording. I can go now. Careful what you say now. All right. Good morning. Welcome back, everybody. What better way to follow up? Hagashavot, Hagmatan Torah, then with learning some more Torah. So it's wonderful to be here. We are continuing on with the halachot of the Katamazon. I don't have much of a voice left after Shavuot. You know how, how, how much we can get. Um, I want to start before we go di dive into the books and carry on with the theorem where we are. So, a question came up last week that I wanted to address briefly. So, we discussed last week in terms of the amount, the amount that one needs to eat in order to be high up for Birkat Amazon. We saw that Minat Torah is Kadesh Svia, the amount that one is satiated. And then we saw that in the Gemara there was a discussion whether it's a Kazayit or a Kabait, so it's asking a Kazayit, one would already be obligated. What does that mean? So there were those opinions who said that even the Oraita would be Kazayit, but probably the more, more common opinion was Midoraita, Kedai Sriya, but Midrabanan, already if you've eaten a Kazayit, even if you're not satiated, you'd still have to say Birkat uh, Amazon. We saw Rabbi Vaidya said that if a person had eaten only a Kazayit of bread, but had eaten the rest of a meal and was therefore satiated, so that would still count as the heel to say the Birkat Amazon from the Torah. So what happens if somebody asks me the question, what happens if you ate less than a kazait of bread, because that's what you had or because that's what you wanted, but you continue to eat a meal with, you know, the chicken, the potatoes, the fruit, the salad, I don't know, whatever it is. So then what would be the din? Because you've only had less than a kazait of bread, so therefore seemingly you would not be obligated in Birkat Amazon. But what about all the other food that you ate? Because we say, normally if you eat bread, you have the, whatever other food you eat in the meal, it doesn't need a separate bacha for na, because Birkat Amazon would cover it. But in this case, you wouldn't be obligated in Birkat Amazon. So the truth is, the Poskim discussed this, and they say, never mind Birkat Amazon, over here you've got a safek about your bacha rishana, the first bacha in the first place. So this is, we discussed this a number of weeks ago as well, the idea of, although Hamotzi, uh, covers all the other food that you eat as part of the meal. We discuss foods that are eaten, which are not generally part of the meal, would apply their own bracha. The classic example is fruit, right? We also spoke about dessert, the ice cream, and that sort of thing. We, we've discussed previously. I'm not, not, not repeating that right now. But how does this relate to our halakha? So, Siman Kuba in Zion is not in your text in front of you. Don't worry, we'll get to the book soon. But in Siman Kuba in Zion, in the, the Shohan Ruch says, this is where he tells us that food which comes as part of the meal. So, food that you would normally eat as part of the meal, things you would have with bread. So, um, you know, for example, basal v'dagim, betzim, yonakot, vina, etc. Meat, fish, uh, eggs, vegetables, cheese. Not all at the same meal, but at different meals. <laughs> that would be, uh, you, 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 those would not require a separate bracha, not before. And not afterwards, right? He says, he says, uh, even if you eat those foods specifically without the bread, enter in they, they do not require a separate bracha before eating, and uh, uh, neither afterwards. The Bikatamazon Patatam, the Bikatamazon would satisfy as well. So, yeah, the Mishnah Bura says the following. He says, Patata, and he quotes here from the Magan Abraham, one of the Akronim on the Shokhan it says, What if a person did not intend to eat bread? He doesn't want to eat bread. You just, hey, you're confused about the bachot, whatever reason you don't want it. You just have a little bit of bread. You say, okay, say hamotzi, and that's it. So yeah, the achronim are not certain whether this actually works or not. Since in such a case, we do not say that these foods are subsidiary to the bread because you don't actually want to eat the bread. We're going to we're going to get there in a few weeks' time. The halachot of ikar v'tapel in brachot, where you have a mixture of foods. You have a main food and a secondary food, and you say the bracha on the ikar, and therefore you don't need to say the bracha on the tapel, and that which is secondary. So, so there are those who understand, as we mentioned, that this whole din of the fact that hamotzi is exempt all the other foods from the bracha. Could be understood in the sense that the bread is the ikar, that is the main food, and the other foods are secondary. But if you're now saying the bread is not the main food, it's really secondary, you don't intend to eat it, you're just eating it so that you can exempt from the brachot, well, it didn't work. So then he says, 
כמה שמע היה חווה טווח אלא טוב. וכל שכן, אין אובר מוסר, שאכל רק פחות מכזית, if you ate less than a כזית of bread. Because if you eat less than a כזית, then you're not going to be high than a ברכה, at least afterwards. אולי כיוון בדרך העולם לקבוע סודר פת, וכאז הפת פותרת לנו בכל גבי. זה עושה את המשנה ברורה. So maybe, since the way it is that when we have a meal, how do we signify a meal? What makes it significant? You have some bread, you have, so therefore, that would be enough to exempt all the other food. That is referring to the case where the person didn't really intend to eat the bread, they just had it as part of the meal in order to exempt the other barakot. But he says when it comes to a, a if you ate less than a kazayit, so that is very, very questionable whether that would actually exempt the other food from the bracha rishana or from the bracha from, certainly not, not the bracha from. So therefore he says, okay, katvu, if it opens it, tov yoter shivarech al shalei dvarim al bracha uriya lekol echat, v'lo yachal kipat klam. In such a case, says the Mishnah Bra would therefore be preferable not to get into all sorts of stikot. We should rather say the bracha on these separate foods and not say the bracha on the bread, not, not have the bread at all. So therefore, that, that, that is a safek, because again, if you ate less than a kazait of bread, you cannot say because of mazor. So what add the bracha, then it's, you have a safek, whether you can say the bracha or not, or not on the other food. You have a safek as well, whether you could, should have said a separate bracha rishana. So he says better not to get, Although we say safek brachot lakel, it's not what we mean. We say better not to get into that situation, and therefore, if one is intends to eat less than a kazayit of bread, rather don't eat it and and uh, either have more than a kazayit or or, or say brachan on all the on all the other separate foods. Okay. Uh, ah, okay, so Shabbos, the, the question was asked, what happens on Shabbos if people just have a little a little bit of bread? So I actually didn't read to the end of the Mishnah Bura. That's why you could always read the whole passage, right? So he actually continues, he says, this din is talking about during the week. But when it comes to Shabbat, again, this is regarding the question of somebody who doesn't really feel like eating bread, right? He says, Shabbat and Yom Tov, that's a mitzvah, part of the, the Sudak Shabbat and Yom Tov. We have Lechem Mishnah, we have with bread, we have, we have Amutin, you should have. So yes, everybody should have a Kazai. Because the Kazai is not actually that much. I know on, on Pesach we'll go, we'll go crazy on how much of the Kazai and how many matzahs and how many whatever. But uh, generally speaking, you say a Kazai is probably the amount that puts into a match box. You know, a, a small match box, not the, not, not the big one. But, but uh, the amount, we, we, when we measure by volume, it's that, that, that amount that would, that would put inside, yeah? yeah. Use it to get rid of the air out of it. Seriously. That's it. Yeah. The question. Okay. What was your question? The question was whether you have to squeeze it to get all, all the air out. Practically speaking, you don't have to do that. In terms of measuring it, it's a as you, can, as, as you can imagine. But generally speaking, again, uh, you know, an ordinary slice of color, probably half a slice of color, is, is enough to be a, to be a kazai. Yeah, the person should have. And again, I mentioned before, if you have other things. In the meal, other parts of you know mizonot, which is put a uh, pastry or something like that, we put in the category of patavab kisne, and that would also count. That would also so come together. So yes, on Shabbat, the, the, this does not apply. On Shabbat, there's a mitzvah to eat bread uh, at the at the surah. You can have a piece. You don't have to eat a you know a whole uh, challah or, or a whole loaf. That's not uh, that would certainly not required. Probably not recommended either. But uh, but but a kazait would be enough. And again, that would cover all the brachot that one needs to make at the meal, except for. Fruit and other things, which we've discussed previously. Also, another one to be aware of, which people sometimes forget, is bread pragafen. That hamotzi lachem and aretz does not cover. It exempts other drinks, but it does not exempt wine or grape juice. So normally, person we have we make kiddush at the beginning of the at the beginning of the meal, and the bread pragafen that you make over the kiddush that would exempt any a, any other wine or grape juice you might drink during the meal. But if you have a situation, sometimes you you could be at home, be at somebody's house. Where just the balabait makes kiddush, and say, let's say some, not everybody else is required, strictly speaking, to drink from the wine. But let's say you didn't drink from the wine, and then you say hamotzi, and then later on in the meal, wine is brought to the table. Then you would need, to, if you have not drunk earlier on, then you would be required to make a separate bread bag up on uh, on drinking wine. Okay, so let's let, let's dive into it. We've been discussing hilchot. There were a couple of topics we left out last week, so I just want to go back to those. So we'll begin on page 144. 144, we're in the middle of shirt number four on the PDF, I think it's the first page. Um, and this is regarding the, the same in a different location. So previously we discussed when 
you're sitting at a meal, when you leave the meal, if you were to leave the table, whether that's considered uprooting from your location in terms of making a new bracha when you come back, here we're talking about something else. Here we're discussing when somebody finishes their meal, where do we have to say, uh, again, on Shabbat, this is probably less common because we're sitting at the table, we don't leave until we all, whatever it is, we, we say at the table where we ate, that is uh, what's usually done. But during the week or something, a person has a sandwich, a person has whatever it is, and then you go somewhere else, so you forgot about Bekat Amazon, and now you remember, oh, you have to do Bekat Amazon. Are you required to go back to the place where you ate your sandwich to say it there? Can you say it where you, where you are? Now, that's the sugya we're talking about. On Mazon, on Mazon would be a similar would, would be a similar question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be a similar question as well. So, so we'll get there. So the first source. So the truth is that the Gemara goes about this in a little bit of a roundabout way. I mean, it doesn't say, you know, a person has to say Berkat Mazon or Alamicha in the place where you ate. Talks about what happens if you left the place. Do you have to go back? And from that, we're going to we're going to extrapolate. So source number forty, Gemara on page one four four. This is we'll start already with the Mishnah. Mishnah Masechet Brachot says we have a machloket. Uh, we're going to see Beit Hiram Beit Shem. Nami sheachal v'shachach v'lo bire. The person ate and they forgot and they did not. Uh, they did not. Hey, you have to go back to the original location where you ate. But here I'll say no. Wherever you are, you can and, and you remember, you can say Okay, so you uh you you you, you ate a chul, whatever it is, you've gone home. At this point, according to Beit you have to come back to Shul to, to, to say the Bracha. According to Beit you can say the Bracha at home where you uh, where you remember. There's the Gemara. Amar of Zvid. Like this machloket is where, what did the Mishnah say? In the first line, it said, that a person forgot. So this was all done to It was done unintentionally. It's not that you ate and you intended to go home and say the Baruch HaMet. But what happens if it was a little amazing? What if it was intentional? The person did not uh, say, okay, I, you know, I'm in a hurry, whatever it is, I'm going to go somewhere else, I'll go home, and then I, and then I will say the Baruch if we in such a case where it's amazing, everybody agrees, including Ben Hillel, that you would have to go back to the original location and then say say the bracha. Okay. The question the question that's now going to come out is okay. So everybody agrees that in a situation whereby it was intentional that you left, now you have to now you remember you have to go back and say the bracha in the original location. What if a person said, okay, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm just not going back. I'm just gonna I'm going to uh, just to say it again. Is that going to work for the effort? That's a pretty effort. After you should have gone back, you knew you should have gone back, but you didn't. So then that, that's going to be the question. So, so uh, first of all, says the Gemara, says Pshita. That's obvious. Again, we had a Machoket, Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai. Beit Shammai says you have to go back to where you originally ate. Beit Hillel says, no, you can say the Bracha in your new location. That's when you forgot. That's when, when you forgot to say the bracha in the first location. If you intentionally left the first location, according to everybody, you have to go back to the first location to say the bracha. So it says the Gemara Pshit, that's obvious. The Shachat then, because it says, Shachat, it says we're talking about a case of Shogek. So now the time, what would you have thought? Who I did not feel the amazing. You would have thought that actually, the Machloket between Begid and Begid Shammai, they have the same Machloket when one left uh, intentionally. And this is just to show you how far Beit Shammai goes. But it says no Kamashmalan. In other words, again, that Beit Hino agrees. If one left intentionally, one would have to go back and and, and, and say the Bracha in the first place. But what, where do they disagree then? They disagree when you forgot. Again, stage oh. one Stage one is the person is, let's, just to make it easy, let's say a person eats in shul and then they go home. Okay, so stage one is the person sitting in shul and eating me and, and, and eating me a meal, right? Then they don't they don't say the bracha and they go home. What meaning what happened? There are two scenarios. Scenario number one is person because I know I still have to say bracha to my zone, but I'm going to go say it somewhere else. That's amazing. There, everybody agrees. They tell and they tell me they need to go back to where they were in the first place, and only there can they say the bracha. 
we're going to get that. You're asking again about the Bidia Bid case. But seeming, seemingly, seemingly at this point, yes. Um, the case where they disagree on is person just, just forgot. They went home. Oh, I remember I have to say the Katamazon. It wasn't intentional that I left. According to Beit Shammai, you still have to go back. According to Beit Hira, you don't have to go back. <clears throat> oh, very good. Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get to that. The first gift. Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Good question. Okay. So the question was, if you're at one place at the table and you move somewhere else, is that considered a new location? The answer is no. That is still the same place. When we're talking here about different location in a different room, a different building, as so long as you're still in the same room where you were in the first place, even, that's, even at a different table, that's okay. That's okay. There are those who say you should go back to say that way, but it's but it's but but but, but that's fine. Okay, so now says the Rambam, source number 41, he says, mm -hmm. So a person put God to say the Katamazon, right? And he's gone to a new place. He says, You say it wherever you are, where you remember. That's if you forgot. The Im if it was intentional that you left, you go back to the original location. And now involved in Birech Makom Shiniskal Okay, so again, this is the case where a person intentionally left. Everybody says Beit Hillel agrees with Beit Shalai that you have to go back to the first location in order to say Birkat Mazur. But nonetheless, a person did not go back. You had to go back. Everybody agrees it was wrong not to go back. You just said Birkat Mazur where you are. Now the question is, Bidiyeva, does that count? Answer says the Rambam, yes, Bidiyeva, that counts. Okay? The Chenim Belech Shomed of Shomalek, I say, Ube Kobatol, I have Kelly Loyal Birkat Mazur, Baha, Shemen Shalash, Elakshu Yoshev Makom. Okay, so he just says you should say the bracha. It should be it should be said while you're sitting, not while you're standing or walking. Well, people spoke about driving, not then while you're driving, right? Um, but um, and, and he says you should. This is this is very relevant, not just for Birkat Hamazon, but he says for main shalosh for alamichia. Often, you know, people say the bracha kind of just standing or walking around. Ideally, to to sit down. Yeah. What's the problem with having to go back to where What's the significance about the place? You ask the about the place that you have to say where you ate. So the idea is that there's a kviat suda. The, the truth is, the whole machlok we're not going to go into it now, but in terms of the din of Shinoi Makom and going back to the place, does it extend to Alamechia? Uh, does it extend to Brachat on Perot of Shiva Minim, etc.? Everybody agrees, if you see from the Mishnah explicitly, regarding. Uh, that it applies to Goni Birkat Hamazon. Yeah, there is that because I wanted it to be that there should be a meal that a person is sitting in the meal and it's not appropriate to go into and 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 to uh, to leave and to say somewhere else. That seems to be the that seems to be the idea behind it. Um, the Rambam, as we saw, said Paskins yeah like Beit Hillel, which is predictable as we generally speaking we do Paskin like Beit Hillel with very few exceptions. Interesting, there are Yona quotes the Gironim here. We actually Paskin like Beit Shammai. It says no source number 42, Lenyan Piska or Lenyan Psak. By Mitsata Gironim, Vav Shmo Ben Hafni Zal, Pasku Alaha, Kebet Shamai, Shapiru Beshochech, Tarek Vakvolim Komor Levi. So this is going to be the spot extreme. If we say that Alaha is like Bet Shamai, it means you always be required, like a pillar, to go back to the original place, even if, it, if you forgot, even if it was unintentional. And in footnote number 23, it gives an explanation. Based on the flow of the Gemara over there, why we might think that we pass in life like Beit Shammai. So the Shulchan Aruch in source number 43 says, uh, again, predictably, the Shulchan Aruch fo follows Beit Hillel, follows the Rambam. So you see, the Ramah is, however, a little bit more stringent. So it says the Shulchan Aruch, somebody who ate in one location needs to. Uh, needs to say the bracha before they leave. Again, what's that coming to exclude? So if a person was on the road, or a person was traveling, and if a person had an intention at the time when they said how much when they started eating, that they were going to eat in multiple locations, so then that's okay. Then that, that, that would be fine. But generally speaking, a person just eats and intends to eat in one place, so he needs to say the bracha there as well. So if 
one left their place and had not yet said the bar. If it was intentional, you go back to the original place and you say the bracha that we saw that everybody had done. However, even though you were meant to go back, if you said bracha was on where you were, you have fulfilled the obligation. So says the Ramah, he has a over the page, says that is according to the Rambam. Avaladata Rosh is still like the Afbe Shogeg Yachzolim Komole Katkila, right? But according to the Rosh, what we saw in the Rabbeinu Yona, that there are those who are like Beit Shammai, that even if you forgot, you would ideally need to go back to your, go back to the first location. But Mezid, Afbe Diyavad Noyatsa, that if it was intentional that you left, even there, after you said, Berkat Tamazon is a new place. We would say no. You have to go back to the original place, and you have to go and say the katamazon again. The idea is that mezid is always going to be a level above shogeg, right? So if we say that, uh, if we say that even for shogeg, you have to go back to the original place, like atchila. So we say but the shogeg, you right, and intentionally, but it happened. You you, you said the bracha in a new location, even though you should have gone back. But then that's okay. But the mazid, you were so. So therefore, the mazid, you, even if you're the, you you would have to go go back. If we say like Ben Hillel that the shogeg, you didn't have to go back in the first place. So we say okay, the shogeg, you don't have to go back in the first place. But mazid, you don't have to go back in the second instance. But 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 uh, so so what we see from here, according to the Shulchan Aruch, what, what's the machloket between them? Again, person left intentionally. According to everybody, you need to go back to the first place to do bir katama uh, to do bir katamazon. If you left the first place because you forgot, and then you said, and, and you said, sorry, if you left the first place intentionally, and then you said the Katamazon in the second place, even though you should have gone back, according to Shukhan Aruch, but you have it after the fact, it's okay. According to the Ramah, no, you need to still go back and you need to say, say the Katamazon again. So it continues the Shukhan Aruch, top of page 146. That's the same machloket. If you you uh, went and you forgot, so according to the Rambam, the Paskinak Behilel, you don't need to go back. According to Rabbi Yonah and the Rosh, the Paskinak Shama, in this case, that you do need to go back. Okay, so so who asked before about the distance? So it says the Mishnah Berurah right here, the the Pa'a Lemaase, and he says the following. He says the Data Rambam, but tell him the Shvirah the Beshogeg. If we say, like the Rambam, that if it was Shogeg, a person forgot to bench and they left in the first place, so we say it's only Lekatkhila, uh, we, say, we say even then, right, Lekatkhila, because you forgot, you can, you can say the Bacha in a new place. So if it was Mezid intentional, we only have to go one step higher. So we have to say there that you should go back to the first location to bear. But for the other, it's okay. It's okay. That's according to the Rambam. But according to the Rosh, it says that even if you forgot, it was unintentional. But nonetheless, you still have to go back to the first place to bend. That, that's if you forgot. But if it was intentional that you left, there the din has to be more stringent. They have to be more stringent. They have to be avad lo yatsa. So now he says like this. Inyan alacha. How do we pass in alacha lamaisa? What's the bottom line? Says the Mishnah Bruh. His scheme was for him. The answer is not so levarech. Afilo yam mezid b'halicha u'bivracha kenav b'sif katan yadav. He says we can be we hold like the lenient view that uh, you would not have to that you would not have to go back again if you if you had forgotten. You would not have to go back in the first. You would not have to go back to to where you ate to bench. That's like the opinion of Beit Hillel. And then he continues. So says the uh, says the Mishnah. Um, at the end of the day, if it is not a shatatcha, person left, particularly if a person left uh, left uh, intentionally. And there it's just easy to go back if it's not uh, a, a great distance, if it's not extenuating circumstances, then better to go back. But if you could not go back, then it would still it would still apply in the new location. Okay. There is another example which was mentioned earlier, 
are what one, one could do, which would work according to everybody, which is if we begin to eat something in the near location, then that is also considered the place that you ate, and that is considered the continuation of the meal. And therefore, you could say Birkat the Muslim there without any big book. Source number 45, top of wave 147. He said, meaning what is this, where one would have to go back? He says, if you have no bread left, above, if you have more bread, you can then eat that in the new place. Um, and then you can say, I if you were, uh, if you're already hungry from the first meal, so then your first meal has, has, has uh, concluded, and then you would not be able, that would not, uh, that would not seem any worse. Says the Mishnah Bura, he adds on number 46. Says, this uh, advice works even if you had left intention. Eat a little bit of bread. The answer is uh, and then you would not be required. Again, this is, this is the continuation of your meal. You would not be required to recite hamotzi before. Or what you had previously eaten. Rather, you would you would uh, eat a bit more bread here, yeah? and then that would be the continuation of your meal in say Bekat Amazon and everything. Obviously, that's why the Shulchan Aruch says this is only applies when Shaloi Heira Ev Machila Rishana that you're no longer that you're not yet hungry. From, from the conclusion of the first meal, if this is two hours later and the first meal is finished, so so it, it doesn't help. You can't now continue. You'd now be starting a new. So, so, what? what? If a person, so so, and we'll, 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 we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll come back. I just want to see the see, see the output your step. I think he I think he he relates to that. If not, we'll we'll, we'll come back. To so the, the Mishnah also mentions, he says, over here we say, I know, in this case, even if it's less than a kazayat of bread that you eat, that would still combine to the first, uh, to, the, to, to the first meal. So says the, the, the Yalkut Yosef, gives the summary, Yana, number 47. He says, Somebody who eats in one location needs to say, there, in the place where they ate. Before getting up and going somewhere else. But what happens if a person got up and left and had not yet said if it was intentional, meaning a person remembered and you know you still have to bench, go back to the first place and back. And for the effort, if you say it, if you did the Bekat Amazon in the second place, that is, that works. If you got up and left uh, unintentionally, you forgot. If you have more bread, you should eat a little bit in the place where you are. Interesting. Yeah, he says kazai. Which number one said it doesn't have to be a kazai, but in any case, he said you eat that in the second place. If you don't have any, uh, if you don't have any more bread, then you can say bekatamazon there where you are. Again, this is a place where this is a case where one forgot and therefore was bishogeg. But he says it's a good stringency to go back to the original location. So basically, everything that we've discussed in the last half now is just there, summarized very nicely in that in source number 47. If anything you don't remember, if anything was confusing, look at source number 47, and that, that, that summarizes perfectly all, all that we've discussed. Regarding Paul's question about why would you need would you be required to say a new uh, when you when you come to the place? So again, seemingly uh, we say that the bracha applies until. Uh, a person's intent has been to stop to stop eating until you you've performed an action or you've done something to show so that, that you no longer eat. So if a person said in their mind that's it, you know, I'm finished eating. Presumably, if a person had the intent that their meal was over, that would be a case of mazing. Right? It's hard to see how it could be a case of shogeg that you forgot. If you remember that you had finished and you remember that you aren't eating anymore, that would be a case of mazing, in which case you would uh, uh, you, you would you would ideally have to go back. The person didn't think about it. And we're saying the person just has some covenant. It's often a question where a person did not decide, I am still eating, I'm not still eating, didn't think about it. We're saying the fact that would seem to be from this, the fact that you moved to a new location does not 
a pro that, that, that does not prevent you from from eating anymore. That's what it, that's the thing coming out. Okay. We have a tendency to yes, just low pass if you make the you make the household. Yes. And when you make those workers, you have an intention that I'm going to finish with a meal at home. And I'm going to wash and make a mochi. Do you have to make brothels at home in school? Or it was, it, is this still part of the meal, even though you didn't have an official meal? Okay, so there, so there, so so we can ask the same question then before we get to show even if you're at home. Right, you come home and you have a kid and you start, you, you know, you have, you have different food. The answer is then no. There, in such a case, you should say, in both those cases, you should say about that one, huh? because the, the, when, when do we say that the food that comes as part of the meal, or even food that comes not as part of the meal, let's say you, you're having a meal and you say, and then you have a bottle of fruit. So you say a separate brahari on the fruit, but you don't need to say a brahari on the fruit, the brahari will cover it. That's when it's eaten during the meal. If it's eaten before the meal, but you don't make a broth or corona and the wine that you drink when you have kids. You're right. The wine is an exception. Wine is, wine is, wine is an exception. It's part of the, the wine is part of the kiddush. That that does not require its own bakat for now. That comes as part of the uh, as part of the cup of as well. But other foods, the one we eat, one has to eat other foods beforehand. So that would be that, that would be separate. So that would be to make a bakat for now and that, and then one would one would say say new a new. Uh, Sorry. Once you've already started the meal, then, then it's too late. Meaning, I get, if you forget, if you, if you remember before you started your meal, so that would be the same. Ala the would, would, would really be the same as same as uh, In other words, ideally to go back to the place to say the to say the uh, the bracha for now, but if you didn't, if you said it, uh, that would be that would be okay. All right, let's uh, the proper manner to do the same bracha that we discussed. Let's go into page 153. Very interesting case which comes up, probably not so practical, but some interesting fundamentals which come out of it as well. Sorry. Okay, so that's a so, so, so that's a separate circuit, which, which is what's called pata babakis. Generally speaking, when we have food from the five grains, so we have bread, which is very clearly hamotzinah and and which is the katamazon. Then you have foods which are mazonot, you know, something which is fried, for example, you know, pasta, donuts, whatever it is, is brahmine mazonot and is alamecha. That's that, that that's very clear. Then you have an entire category of food which is in the middle. There is an entire share on this. In fact. I think we may have skipped it. I think it might have been in volume 12 or 13. But we may go, we, we may go back, we'll get the printout because it's, it's, it's a very relevant subject worth discussing, which is what's called pata baba kisna, uh, which is some sort of pastry dough, uh, something which is baked, which in one way is similar to bread, but in other ways is not similar to bread. Okay, pizza would fall into that category, barek would fall into that category, different things like that. Of course, there's a three different opinions in the Rishonim as to what constitutes pata baba kisna. And there, so, so pizza itself is a is a tremendous machloket amongst the amongst the poskim. But you know whether it is whether it is hamotzi or whether it's or not, or whether it's patabab kisnin. And sometimes it may depend on how the pizza is made. It may not depend on that. But, but very often you know, you go to these shops and they have these signs and go, you know, this is uh, uh you know this is mizanot or this is hamotzi. It's like, you know you've decided. I always tell people, you know, you are not necessarily bound by the suck of the, uh, of, the of the restaurant owner or whatever it is. I was a uh, but. But uh, I've actually seen sometimes you have you have this on the Masonic rolls as well. It's the same. It's, it's the same subject. But I've seen and sometimes there's a, a sticker that says you know, Masonot. Sometimes they just say Masonot. Once I saw one that was particularly cool. You know, it said Masonot if eaten as a snack, but if eaten as part of a meal, then it would be how much. So that's the whole thing. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, uh, so 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 those kind of that category depends on how much you eat, how it's done, whether it's part of the Kriyat Suda or not. So those are foods which actually the Bhakti can change. In Mizanat and Hamatsi. But it, right, it, it's a part of a bigger surgery, which maybe we'll, we'll, we'll discuss one day because it, it, it does come up a lot. Um, okay, page 153. So here there's a question about children and Bekat Amazon. Very interesting uh, case in terms of the numbers. So we discussed a few weeks ago in Svata Omer what happens when you have a child who has a bar mitzvah during, during Svata Omer. 
So at the beginning, for part of it, they were a katan, and only later on, they were a gadol. Can they continue counting? Can they continue saying a bracha? So yeah, so that's a case which is a bit more practical. Yeah, it's an interesting case, which the Poskim discuss before we get there. So source 58. The Shulchan Aruch says that a katan, this we know, a katan, a minor, is only obligated on its work, on a rabbinic level, not on a Torah level. It's part of the mitzvah of Chinuch. And he says, therefore, I, the Ben Mubarech uh, Labir, th- there is a statement in the Gemara which says that a son could say the Bracha on behalf of his father. That only applies, Sheloach Alaav Kedai Shkia, Sheno Chayav Ela Midrabana. We discussed this, I think, last week, maybe the previous show, we discussed at length. What happens when one person is obligated Midoraita and one person is obligated Midrabana? Right? One person only ate a Gazayit, the other person ate Kedai Shkia. Could the person who uh, is obligated midrabanan uh, perform the mitzvah on behalf of the person who is obligated midoraita. Answer is no. So here he says, says the Mishnah Barat, Shavach ala av kadei shviya, Avar imach ala av kadei shviya, Shachayav levarach min ha-Torah. The father ate to the point he was satiated, so he needs to eat, he needs to say the bracha midoraita. The son, who is a katan, even if he, however much he ate, he's only had midrabanan, and therefore he cannot fulfill the mitzvah for him. So what happens, Rabbi Akiva Eger discusses the following case. A person was a katan, and they ate, and they ate kadei svia, meaning they ate until they were satiated. So their obligation now of the katanazon is only midrabanan, because they're a katan. And then they become a gadol. They eat, you know, five minutes before they, uh, before they, before they turn 13, and then they become a gadol. So now they're a gadol. So they don't, haven't eaten anymore, but the food is still uh, digesting, right? So therefore, the question is, what is the chiyuv of Berkat Amazon? Is it the fact that you ate? Is it the action? Or is it the outcome? Is it the fact that you ate or the fact that you are satiated? If it's the fact that he's still satiated, then would you say that now, on a Torah level, he has to go back and say Berkat Amazon again? Because before he did it with Rabbanan, and now he's obligated with the right. If he eats more, obviously, he'd have to say the, say the bracha. But yeah, yeah. He says, Rabbi Akiva, he what? Is he sentient or is he sentient or have bread? Yeah, yeah, he's a bread. He's a yeah. bread. Okay, so says Rabbi source number 16. He says, Katan Chayav Mizra Banan, Mistapak now. Be'achal be'yom ha'acharon sh'ashnat yudbev. The person ate just before turning 13. Right, they ate Erev, Kodem Laina. U'bitchilat ha'layla sh'nasa gadol. Now, the beginning of the night, right, which is the next day, he's become a gadol. Adai lo netakel ha'mazon. Im mu'chayav midorait ha'levare. Is he now required Midoraita to say Birkat Amazon. Im Nidon Dahu Deoraita Yesh Lomad Im Berech Kodem Alayla, Ikshech Shich, Sech Lachzor Leboech, Kevan de Bidan de Boech, Loya Chayav Minatoa. Because would we say that the fact that he, that he already said Birkat Amazon previously when he was rabbinically obligated, and now he's a Gadol, and now he is uh, biblically, uh, biblically uh, obligated. So where do we find a proof of this from? So the Kutay Chuvah. Quotes the Chokhmat Adam, which brings a very, very interesting, uh, interesting proof. The Chokhmat Adam, by the way, with a number of Sarim, one of the, uh, uh, it was written before the Mishnah Bra, Mishnah Bra quotes him, quotes him very, very often. But this was the Sefer that the, uh, the sort of uh, the Ashkenazi uh, Psak, you know, the go to Sefer. There's the Chaye Adam and there's the Chokhmat Adam, different names, different Sarim written on different parts of the Shulchan Aruch. He has an, in his introduction, I think it's to the Chokhmat Adam, right? It's an amazing introduction. He talks about he was a merchant. And he went and he said how much people were the, I mean, I told you a story before, but it's a fantastic story. And he, he spoke about how, you know, he writes, he was a merchant and he had to go out to sea and he had to go and make business and people would laugh at him. People would make fun of him. And they would say, you don't, uh, you don't take Torah seriously. You're just going out looking for money. And he would say, I'm not looking for money. This is the only way that I could make Tanasa for my family. But I promise you that wherever I go, I was thinking about the Torah. When I was on the ship, I was thinking about the Torah. When I was in the shop, you know, I was thinking about the Torah. When I was waiting for the customers, just that my, my thoughts were on it all the time. If you've ever studied the Chokhmat Adam or the Chaye Adam, you can see uh, the proof of this because it's a uh, tremendous work. A, a, one of a great, uh, one, one of our great sages. And then Aaron Rosell wrote a song about it and basically uses the words of the, uh, the words of the introduction of the song. Very, very beautiful uh, ideas. But so he says, yeah, the Dikteit Shuvah quotes the Chokhmat Adam and he says the following. He says a case which is similar to our case, maybe, but maybe not. Where you have again a person who ate, where at the time that they ate, they were not obligated in Birkat Amazon, 
But later on, they would become obligated in Birkat Hazon. What would be that case? That is the case of an Onen. And a person who has suffered a bereavement, and one of their uh, relatives on which they were going to have to mourn has died. So initially, until the burial has taken place, there's a din of Aninut, whereby a person is exempt from positive mitzvah because there is no responsibility to, to, to engage in the burial, etc. Once the burial has taken place, the avel, the onen becomes an avel, becomes a mourner, and they would then be obligated in the union. So again, he asks the question, if a person, uh, while they were in their state of aninut, they'd eaten a meal, again, that was a shaykh, but after the burial, would they be required to go back and then say the say the book? So he says like this. He says, If a person is exempt from the Amazon, he has to go back to the Amazon. 61. 61, sorry. Um, page 154, mm. the, the first three lines, it's all 61. Uh, right? He says, So a person ate before the burial took place. The food has not yet been digested. They would then need to go back and say, etc. Skipping a few lines now. Uh, after the brackets, he says, Same thing regarding the bracha which a person would not have would not have said beforehand, but would then be obligated, uh, would then be obligated after. So the question is, can you infer from that case of the onen, which the Bukhmat brings, to the case of this child who becomes a becomes a gabba? So it says Rabbi Akiva Ege continues in source number 62. Which is really the continuation of source number 60, just later on in the Chuba. He says, or not in the Chuba, in the commentary, whatever it is, he says, then I was shown this, uh, this piece from the Chokhmat Adam, whether he needs to say the Bracha or not. So now he says in the second paragraph in 62, says Rabbi Akiva these two cases are not similar. There's a difference between them. He says, yes, He says, the case of the Anen is not the same. Why? Because this person was always obligated in the Katamazah. Why, did they, practically speaking, they did not have to do it. Why? Because when you are an Onen, it comes from the fact that he's osek for mitzvah, and therefore patur from all of the mitzvot. That is how he, how he explains it. That, that an onen is meant to be engaged in the mitzvah of a burying, a, of, of, of arranging for the funeral. And this is why, by the way, we have a, a lot of shaylas today. Now that, you know, once upon a time, people were much more involved in different uh, parts of the details. Today, you have the Hebrew Kedisha that does everything. Do the dinim of aninut still apply? We say the dinim of aninut do still apply because... Uh, you know, a person has to, uh, there, there are many things a person still has to arrange in terms of the funeral, in terms of contacting the Heber Kedeshan, getting the different things done. Where it becomes more of a shayla is where the mate is in one country and the person is in, a, is in a different country. Or, you know, if the person's not even going to, if the person's unable to attend the funeral, something like that. So then there is nothing that they can do. Would the dinner of not still apply? So there are discussions there regarding what available. But in any event, the, 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 there's a case now of sacred mitzvah, patuba mitzvah. Therefore, he is practically speaking exempt from the mitzvah now, even though, right, he has perfectly said that he, he is obligated, but he's currently exempt. That is the case of the onen. When it comes to the other case of the katan, well, that's not the same. So, so the yeh says, b'zeh yesh lomar, the techef shegamal mitzvah, sach nasot mitzvah to, the bekat amazon. Once the kura has taken place, you go back and do the uh, other mitzvah you're obligated in, which is Birkat Amazon. Yeah, you're a katan, he's not a bachiyu. He doesn't actually have the obligation at all. And he says, yes, Therefore, says Rabbi Kiva Eger, it would seem to make sense that since at the time that he's eating, he has no chiyu, we won't say that now the chiyu comes and adds on after he becomes a gadol because of the food that he's previously eaten, and then as he leaves it with a with a sarich ear. Um, Rabbi Weider Yosef Paskins the same way. He says the same thing over here, number sixty-three. You can just see the line in bold. He says, "Since the eating took place 
when the, when the person was not a, a uh, uh, was not obligated, therefore there would be no obligation for Birkat Hamazon. Again, not probably not so practical this case exactly how, how it happens, but it's a, or, or maybe maybe, but it's but, but it's an interesting fundamental which comes out of it. Um, he also discusses over here Rabbi um, Yosef, the case of the Onan, uh, that's over the page in source number 64. So just one final piece of Machshava, and source number 65 on page 157, here you have the Sefer Chinuch. Sefer Chinuch explains the, uh, um, we mentioned Bar Mitzvah, so it said that the Sefer Chinuch was written, we actually aren't sure, there are thoughts, but we, it's, it's not completely clear who the author of the Sefer Chinuch was, but it said that, it, why is it called Sefer Chinuch? Sefer Chinuch is a book which goes through each parasha. It lists the different of the one mitzvot. It lists all the mitzvot which appear in that particular parasha. And it goes through, explains each of the 613 mitzvot. Shoshah mitzvah, Tameh mitzvah, what are the roots behind it? And explaining some of the, the halachot. Um, so if we just study today in great depth, it was said that the author wrote it for his son as he was to learn with him for his bar mitzvah. That's why it's called the Sefer Chinuch. So, uh, you know, the bar mitzvah syllabus has changed a little bit over the centuries. It says the Sefer Achinuch in source number 65. He says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is of great kindness. He desires good for his creatures. He wants them to receive, to be, to, to uh, merit, to receive the greatest goodness from him. And therefore, it says the idea. What is the idea of a bracha? The bracha that we say, we're not uh, um, not blessing God, so to speak, but it's really a mention to arouse ourselves to the words that we say, so that we can understand that where all the goodness comes from. And then he says, now in bold, we talk it all root at by awakening ourselves to be conscious and to recognize all this goodness that there is. And, and that we should understand where all this goodness comes from. And that he has the ability to send it uh, on, onto all the world. So too, therefore, by reciting that and by causing this awakening within ourselves, that should uh, hopefully merit, cause us to have the merit to, to continue to merit all these, uh, all, 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 the, all these blessings. He then quotes here yeah, in source number 66, that he has a tradition from his rabbis, as Kachma Kabbalah Nimran Batai, Yishma Emel, Shekola Zayeva Bukata Mazon, Mazonatav Matsuyeno Bechavod Kol Yama. That anybody who is careful in Usati Bukata Mazon will have his food and will be easily available to him all, in all the days with dignity and with honor. So that is uh, maybe merit to appreciate that message. And that is why it's so important to understand all the details and all the lachot of the Bukata Mazon. So Ad Khan, for today, next week, we'll continue with the next year, number five. We we were finished with the uh, Birkat Amazon for now. We're going to go into the Arachot of Bray Priya X, Bray Priya Dama, and some of the other some of the other Bachot that we say uh, before eating. <laughs>